So hello, everybody. I think it's time to start. Thank you for coming to this session, uh, which is dedicated to the Redfish standard, uh, which is aimed at to be a replacement for the IPMI standard. Uh, my name is Bruno Kornek. I'm working for Hewlett Packard Enterprise as a distinguished technologist in charge of uh, everything related to open source and Linux. I'm based in, in Europe, as you can hear from my accent. And uh, I'm French, in fact. That's why. <laughs> and uh, I'm involved in different projects inside or outside of HP. So feel free to come to me if you want to know more about packaging or uh, Docker containers like I did this morning. Uh, to start, I would like to, to have everybody on the same level uh, with regards to a certain number of uh, definitions. So the first definition is around REST, because Redfish is based on all those definitions. So REST is a way to organize uh, software architecture in a new way for web services using verbs uh, as part of the HTTP protocol. Uh, get, post, put, delete, and most of the time also patch and head, a patch being pretty interesting for Redfish. Uh, you have all the links to Wikipedia if you want to have more, more details on, on what it does. Uh, we are also talking about API, so an application programming interface, which means a, way, a standard way to discuss between software components between a client and a server, typically, such as what you can find uh, around X window, around the uh, POSIX for, for the uh, uh, Unix systems or uh, OpenStack, which is based on, on standard API as well, and create standard APIs for uh, uh, cloud environment. So uh, that's the second term we will use. Uh, we will also use the notion of JSON that probably most of you already know, uh, which is a, a way to serialize data and pass data structure from uh, one software component to another software component, uh, which remains pretty easy for humans to, to understand if you compare it with uh, XML, for example, which, is which has much more uh, structure around it and which is pretty similar to, to YAML and there are equivalents between those, those languages as we, we, we will see a bit later on. And the last one, which may be less known by people, is OData, uh, which is a controversial uh, uh, standard which is used by, by Redfish. Uh, it's an open protocol which uh, gives you a way to provide metadata information and dynamic resources inside your, your JSON uh, structure. And again, it it's relies on, on the same REST uh, APIs that uh, we have seen previously. So with all of that, uh, we can now start to talk about what Redfish is and why it has been created. So Redfish is an industry standard which is uh, led by the DMTF consortium, as it's a working group as part of the DMTF consortium. And the goal is to have a management platform which is driven by RESTful API using JSON or, and, or XML formats based on the OData CSDL source. So, so people from the Redfish consortium, they use the CSDL as their real source of development for describing the standard, and they generate equivalent JSON and XML uh, schemas that you can use, and further now, they, they are also generating uh, YAML as well. Um, so the goal is really to make a standard way to manage systems, and even more than systems coming from different manufacturers. Something that the uh, previous tools that have been put on the market have never been able to achieve, uh, Smash being one of the examples, for example. Um, the goal is really to make something which is much more powerful and easy to use and more standard than what we mean by standard these days, uh, so web-based. Uh, than what existed before, typically IPMI. And, and if you look at the, IPM, the IPMI website today, the, the IPMI uh, promoter are, are stating that there, will, there won't be any further development around IPMI anymore. So, and they point to Redfish as a way forward for future management of systems. And IPMI was really uh, difficult to deal with and was uh, something which was highly unportable between manufacturers. So the, really the goal of, uh, of Redfish is to solve all of those problems, bringing uh, something which is based on existing standard way of, of communication between client and server. So RESTful API using JSON, using OData, 
using HTTPS as a way to communicate between client and server, which makes it more secure. Uh, it's HTTP based on IP, so you can route it, you can do whatever you want, in fact, uh, with it as a, as a protocol. Uh, it goes also further than just the system management. It aims also at being uh, an IT management protocol. So right now, the, the first four years have been focusing around uh, systems themselves, but now they are extending to storage, to chassis, to data center infrastructure, uh, think uh, power, uh, thermal conditions, etc. cetera. Uh, one of the nice and not nice thing about the standard is that it provides, like SNMP, a no EM area. So for manufacturer, if there, is, there are some aspects of the management which are not yet standardized, meaning not all manufacturers agree on the way to describe uh, that feature, or not all manufacturers have that feature part of the hardware, so they're not interested in having it as part of the standard, then you can have an OEM area in the JSON structure where you store your features, the specific features, or not yet standardized feature, and you can develop your own tools to use those extensions. Of course, uh, this is a bit of devi deviation with regards to having a standard, but that's a nice way for manufacturer to adopt that standard because it does not prevent them to extend it and do what they want uh, with proprietary tools if they don't want to have a, an, open, an open source tool. And the goal is it's to help with automation of uh, system management. So, the standard has been published the first time in 2015. The working group was created in 2014. Uh, you have on the DMTF website, so dmtf.org, standards, uh, Redfish, you have everything that they are publishing, and it has increased a lot these last years uh, around so the schemas themselves, describing what you can do, how you can address resources as part of the, uh, uh, of the management browsing documentation, white paper, facts, and what is really interesting are the mockups, and I will show that to you later on. Uh, they provide simulation of management boards, BMCs, so that you can have a look past them following the, the, the links uh, inside the, uh, the management uh, stream, and you have a very good idea of what you can do with, uh, with the Redfish interface. Uh, currently, it's available by a certain number of manufacturers. So Dell, HPE being the promoter of the standards, they have been pretty active on supporting Redfish since day one. Uh, but you also find it on Supermicro BMCs, Inside Software, Lenovo, and probably a, a couple of others as well. I, I've not tick everybody, but uh, uh, there are quite a lot of people now interested. And even outside of the pure uh, server areas, there are more and more uh, hardware components that uh, start thinking about adding um, a Redfish support. Um, so this gives you an idea of the list. This is a DMTF slide. This gives you an idea of, uh, of the companies uh, behind the, the Redfish standard and, and trying to promote it. And you also have a certain number of other efforts which are in relationship with Redfish. Typically, the guy uh, working around the open compute project, so the OCP platform, uh, the Gen Z consortium, uh, which creates a, an in, a, a standard interconnect between systems at large, it could be racks, et cetera. Uh, the DCIM, but it's not mentioned here, which is around the um, data center infrastructure. So what do you want to do with Redfish? Um, well, you want to do what you were doing with IPMI first. And one of the goals of the, of the standard body right now is to, now, now that they have stabilized the, the, the standard at a certain level of features, they really want to tackle what remains not covered uh, that people are using around the IPMI and be sure that Redfish provides a, a similar feature. Uh, so, of course, you want to be able to gather information about the health of your server, temperature, all the sensors inside the machine, uh, fans information, inventory information, part numbers, UIDs, all those type of stuff. You want to be able to get them uh, and have a good view on the topology of your machine uh, with regard to CPUs, memory, uh, extensions, disks, uh, NICs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they are even working on the notion of profiles, uh, interoperability profiles, which means that as a customer, you can define a Redfish profile and you can assess that the machine you're buying complies to the Redfish, Redfish profile that you're describing. 
uh, which means that uh, you say, okay, I want the server to always have two CPUs, to have that number of NIC, to have uh, that type of uh, component inside. You can enforce that through profile, and, you, and the DMTF publishes tools to help you assess that uh, the, server, the physical server you're buying is in agreement with uh, the profile you have decided to, to create. Uh, so you can get information. You can also perform actions. So think about get and post or put uh, operations through the REST API. Uh, you can have actions on, on the power, so you can reboot the system, reboot into whatever mode you, you want, change the boot order of the system. Uh, you can have an, in, actions on the thresholds, run power, run fans, stuff like that. There are new notions of events and alerts that have been uh, put in place more recently in the, in the stack. Um, and moreover, on top of that, you can also manage the server infrastructure. So of course, you can manage the BMC itself, information at the BMC levels, its network settings and the accounts, user accounts are uh, linked to a, a directory server on which you will manage the authorization, authentication, so that people can log on it. But also we are going upper in the stack, so having inventory at chassis level, so if you have a blade infrastructure, or if you have for us moonshot type of chassis with a lot of small computers inside the loud box, then you have inventories of, of those stuff. And as I, I was saying, there are extensions working on the SNIA around Swordfish, which uh, is uh, um, concerning everything related to storage uh, up to very high level, high, high end level of, of storage systems. And DCIM, which deals with the facility management, with the data center management and provides a, notion, a new notion of sensor, which will be uh, the key resource that you can address inside the Redfish schema to be able to control uh, a full infrastructure, in fact. So there is a standard itself, and people are developing a certain number of tools around it, open source tools, mostly some non-open source tools as well, to be able to interact with Redfish-based systems. So again, the DMTF has made quite a very good job as publishing a lot of tools on their website and on GitHub through, through their GitHub entry. Uh, typically, you have all the bind bindings that you need for a various set of languages. Uh, you have CLI tools to be able to interact with uh, Redfish-based uh, BMCs. You have simulators of uh, BMCs, of Redfish-compliant BMCs. You have validation tools as well. Uh, that allow you to, to, to assess that uh, a Redfish developed BMC software is compliant with uh, the, the standard. Uh, and again, uh, the markup are also pretty important on, uh, on, on the development side. And on the community side, you have a certain number of projects that have been uh, developed to, to add features in relationship with existing tools. So typically, uh, the OpenStack Ironic Bare Metal uh, uh, system as part of the OpenStack, so the, the possibility to deploy bare metal nodes to be used inside a cloud infrastructure is using the Sushi library that has been developed for OpenStack to interact directly with Redfish-based BMCs in that context. Uh, you have a, a Redfish module for Ansible, uh, which uh, again uh, helps you dialogue with, uh, with the BMC using the Redfish protocol. Similarly, uh, OpenSUSE guys are developing the same module for Salt. Um, and you have Redfish support inside the Open BMC project. So if you're more on an OCP type of uh, platform, uh, you can use uh, the Open BMC stack inside your uh, your architecture to manage your management board. And you can have a Redfish support as part of this uh, Open BMC implementation. You even have a, a plug, uh, an Agios plugin for it as well. And the two Python, the Python libraries or multiple Python libraries, and I'm responsible of one of those. Well, responsible, culprit. Um, so you have a, a data model which represents all the resources you can deal with at the Redfish level, but I don't want to pass too much time here. I prefer to do that live on the website. So here you have the redfish.dmdf.org um, website and they behave like a BMC, so they have a slash redfish slash v1 and tree point, which is the, the root of the, the tree of resources that you can manage. And then they are providing multiple types of mockups a single rack, an OCP profile, 
a blade system, blade partitions, which are systems like the HP Superdome system. So it's a f you can physically create multiple computers inside a single box. So are isolated electrically and stuff like that. Don't care. Um, and the composable system as well. So yeah, you have many, many examples. Uh, what is, uh, so the one I will uh, explore is just a simple rack because that's something that everybody should know. It's a rack server you put in a rack to you, uh, to CPUs and stuff like that. And so you have the, uh, the interface here and you have links that have been created for each entry point so that you can start to explore the system. And you have entry points which are mandatory uh, I argued yesterday, during, well, two days ago during the, the Redfish workshop, we had here that the systems is mandatory for me from what I read in the spec, but the expert told me it's not mandatory, so now I don't know anymore. So, but you should find some stable entry points, but the one, in fact, the principle of parsing the Redfish tree is that you should not expect something to be called something. You should parse it, you should explore the stuff, find the entry, find the, uh, the members of the, of the collections, and do your job after having found all the, the information on the system. So generally, on a system, you will find systems as an entry point, chassis, and managers. The rest is potentially found or potentially not found, depending on the implementation by your uh, hardware vendor. Uh, of course, systems is here a rack-mounted server, so you, will, you just have one system. So the members of that entry system is just one entry, which has a name which is uh, 437x uh, something. Uh, it depends. You, don't, you, don't, uh, you shouldn't rely on the name which is presented here. It could be one. A lot of manufacturers do that with numbers. So if you have a blade chassis, you have one, two, three, four, which corresponds to blade one, two, three, four. But you may have a serial number, you may have something else. So again, you need to explore, find the number to be able to go deeper in the tree. So you start to find some information about your system, such as uh, a serial number, part number, description, UIDs, etc., etc., And quite a lot of, uh, of information, boot information, uh, boot possibilities, uh, current boot mode, trusted modules if you have a TPM inside your machine. Uh, and you see you may have some OEM entry points here, uh, which makes specific entries for that manufacturer. Uh, BIOS version is generally always there. It's part of the standard. Memory summary, BIOS. And then you have, again, some further entry points. For example, you may want to have more information about the internet if interfaces of your system, and then you go down and you have two, inter two NICs inside your machine. You can have a look at one, and you can find, for example, the MAC address of your NIC. So that's one way to populate automatically a deployment server, or DHCP servers with, with the NIC, the IP you want, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a, an idea of how this is, this is organized, and you have the same stuff at the manager level, so for example, the, the resource of uh, network interface is the same for the BMC. A BMC is as potentially a serial console, a shell access, a firmware version, which is of course different from the BIOS version, but you also have an Ethernet, Ethernet interface, and you may want to go there. There is only one, generally there is only one internet interface for BMC, and you have the MAC address of this time the BMC, which is here. So that was to give you an idea of how you can do to, so just through the web interface, you can browse the REST API, and you can start having a, a good idea of uh, what you can do and can't do with, uh, with the Redfish protocol. And of course, uh, it's very easy, starting from that, to uh, do that programmatically if you want. Um, recent new features and changes as part of the standard. So, there are numberings that tend to publish three times per year. Uh, this year, maybe they will have a fourth release because there are quite a lot of uh, additions. Uh, additions may be important or less important depending on the version. There is no real uh, uh, good uh, ground level for that. Uh, so last year, they added the support for LDAP, Active Directory configuration for the BMC providers. They added something which is probably very interesting, which is and, and will become more interesting as time passes and the, the resource develops. Is a telemetry service to be able to collect information through metrics, 
typically for your power, your, your fans, uh, in an easy way. So, you know, uh, to, avoid, so to avoid you to pull on a regular base the BMC to get the information, which can be pretty costly, uh, the telemetry service is doing the job for you, and you can ask for a report, and you can, with one API request, get a full set of uh, a time-based report of measurements of values associated to the metric you, you ask for. Um, and last year also they added the open API support, uh, which allows them to have now uh, the uh, YAML support at parity and generated completely automatically from, uh, from the specification. Uh, oops, sorry. They added certificate management as well. They worked on this, the notion of sensor for extension to the data center. Um, they introduced the notion of host interface. So this is a possibility for your BMC to be seen by your operating system if it's configured to be seen by the operating system. And thus, it allows you, for example, to do REST queries from the operating system to the Redfish interface. Uh, available through that virtual uh, network interface. That's pretty interesting. Um, and they're working, so, so the 2019.2 should be officially announced next week or the week after. Uh, and the main improvement is around software updates. So each time they also review documentation, they fix bugs, they clarify some stuff in the standard. I, I, I don't explain that in details here. Uh, and they're working for the next version on, uh, so next or later, because we, we don't know exactly when it will be adopted, but there are discussions uh, in the Redfish forum around uh, the possibility to send events through SMTP protocol to configure uh, managed devices as an SNMP. We, even if they don't want to, to pursue the SNMP path, they would prefer people to adopt Redfish, but there are certain cases where SNMP is, is mandatory. Uh, possibility also to configure secure boot, et cetera talk about the rest. So uh, another uh, simulator which exists is the one we are doing at HP to simulate our platform. So the one by the DMTF are really generic ones. There is no uh, real hardware behind it. It's completely a fake system which is proposed to you, a potential working one, but it's still with fake value. Here you have uh, emulation possible of different HPE servers, and so you can take a two CPU, a four CPU, and uh, a data center, optimize one or a generic one, and you can do exactly the same. So you can, you can pass all the level, but for example, you see that, uh, so we have an OEM entry, uh, which is developed, but you see that we have, for example, the telemetry service, which is not part yet of the mockup of the DMTF, because we are a bit in advance for the implementation. So I said there is a OEM part where, where how do manufacturers can uh, add, add their own improvement, but also it's a sandbox for us to test new features, waiting for them to be adopted and part of the standard. And, and that's what happens most of the time, is that uh, something which is in the OEM to start with end up being in, as part of the standard. So uh, the telemetry service is already for us ready because we started to have it as part of our OEM branch, and now it's really part of the standard. So you, ha you have the possibility to... Uh, to, so we are interacting with an ILO, a real ILO system, our BMC board, and, and you can look at uh, the various uh, potential reports that you can do on CPU, on memory, et cetera, et cetera. So you have another simulator, which is more like a real server on which you can make your tries with your software tools to be sure that uh, your software development is working, is working correctly. Um, some additional examples around the around Redfish, so for example, for the security, uh, here is what you would do to have the secure boot configuration of your system, so you do get on that URL, so system slash one, again, is something which will work on an HP server, it may not work on an Amazon manufacturer server, you need to find how it's named, um, and we have seen the trusted module during the, the, the passing. Uh, Secure boot, for example, setup is now part of the standard, as well as TPM and, and physical security. Uh, and they were removed on our side in our implementation from the OEM part. So originally it was there, and as everybody has that feature, or most of the manufacturers have that feature, now it's really part of the standard. Um, what else? So typically here we have some, uh, some security features which are still in our area for us. 
Uh, we have, for example, a FIPS profile configuration that we can, we can apply. That's not something the industry uh, has agreed upon, so, so it's pending uh, more, more adoption. The virtual NIC uh, I was mentioning is also something we have developed originally and that we have pushed as a standard. And it's something which, is, which can work without any specific driver. So uh, for Linux, it's, uh, it's an in inbox uh, USB EEM network driver. If you load that driver, you will enable your operating system, your Linux distribution to talk to the Redfish, to the BMC, the network, the virtual network of the BMC, which will appear on your system as an additional network interface, and then you will be able to make Redfish queries directly here. Yes, question. Is that synonymous to the IP mine driver that you can load on the system, Redfish? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, except that you don't need, well, it's, it's a bit different. It's just uh, an interface that you are making, uh, uh, you, you make appear on the system which was not there before. So it's up to you. Either you deny the, the driver and the system will never see the BMC, which for some security environments uh, is, is needed, or you want the facility and then you can activate it. It also depends how you do the management of your machine. Do you have a specific network, an out of band network that you want to use, or do you want to use the in-band network of the system to also do the management? So it's really, it allows you to give you the flexibility to choose where you are gathering the management information. Uh, It's available as part of the standard. So every manufacturer who has uh, the feature embedded in their, in their firmware uh, will, make it, ma will make an entry point available for you. So you can detect it. Sorry, do, I, I didn't get it. So it's part of our, uh, so on HP hardware, I can more talk about that. It's already available as part of the ILO 5 firmware 140. So it's, it's linked to the firmware evolution because all those, all those Redfish calls and the evolution of the standard, we, we participate to it, and then there are people developing our firmware for our BMC that are adding the features to the firmware and make it available. But as part of firmware version, so for ILO 5 firmware version 140, for ILO 4, I don't know, uh, it's, it's available right now, so you can use it. Um, okay, so Open API is pretty interesting because it, it allows you to uh, describe the service in a, in a YAML format and you can have an automatic way. So this is a, the former Swagger for those of you who, who know Swagger maybe more. So you, you have an easy way once you have your Redfish schema described as a YAML Open API compatible format to generate software out of it. There are, there are tools to create a web server compliant with a schema. So you can fully create your own BMC software if you want, once you have created your, your uh, YAML format. And the YAML format here is generated for us by uh, the DMTF tools. And that's something which has been added in uh, 1.6.0 of the, of the standard. And uh, so CSDL files are still, the Odata CSDL files are still what the DMTF use as the source code, I would say, for, this, for the implementation of the standard. And they generate YAML, they generate JSON, they generate XML uh, schemas from those files in a coherent way. Um, so we worked on a, on a couple of years ago, so in 2015, uh, there was no real Python uh, library available to help you, or the one which was there was really rudimental. And so DMTF at that time had not released it under an open source license. So uh, as we wanted to use it, we started to, to develop our own to be able to uh, interact with, uh, with our Redfish systems and add that for some demos we were doing, et cetera, so and become a small, uh, a small easy to use tool for us, uh, which provides a certain number of, of features. It requires quite a lot of Python dependencies. So if you want something light, you, you may use Sushi from OpenStack. If you want something more uh, structured and, and, and a bit richer, uh, you may want to use that one and contribute to it. Um, so we have a client tool, we have a library, we have an asset tool which gives you uh, inventory uh, uh, asset numbers uh, for, for, for a system, for example, and it has been tested across a large range of uh, physical machines. One I have access to being more HP-based, so HPE-based, 
and it's uh, available for different type of, uh, of environments. Um, so what is important is that the MTF is looking for feedback, um, especially for people who are using IPMI and, and manage their infrastructure with IPMI. Why, what would prevent you from using Redfish instead of IPMI to manage your, your environment? So they are really keen to receive feedback from customers having that type of setup. Uh, use the Redfish user forum for that or to ask whatever questions you want on top of uh, uh, what has been discussed today. Um, there is a feedback portal. You can submit bug reports uh, if there is something that you, a feature announcement or uh, an issue you find with a uh, with standard, uh, it's, it's available as well online. Uh, so really, the, this year, they want to, to focus more on the end customers. And uh, they, they estimate that the, the end customers should drive the, now the, the future effort around Redfish because the base is really strong today. So what we need is uh, what you need. Um, so what tools are missing today? What would make your life uh, easier for integrating that standard protocol inside your environment? Um, and what prevents you from, from transitioning from uh, legacy tools that you are using right now? Um, again, there, a lot of tools are available on the, on the DMTF website uh, to, to make tests, to grab uh, bindings, etc. So feel free to do that. And also, I started a wiki page on, uh, on the Redfish specification. But uh, as you have heard, I'm not a native English speaker. So uh, I'm not either a native English writer. So you may want to help me and, and improve the, the wiki page as well uh, by adding uh, more stuff on it. And last point for me is we are organizing Redfish workshops. Uh, the one in San Diego is already done. It was uh, on the 20th. Uh, you can find on that URL the, uh, all the presentations that have been made and which go in much more detail than what I've been able to do in 35, 32 minutes uh, today. Uh, we have uh, also a workshop which is planned in Europe for uh, the European people. Uh, the 31st of October in Lyon, my own country. And we have made, uh, well, we, we are making submissions for LinuxConf Australia and SuzuCon uh, so that we are covering more uh, people potentially. And as you have been very brave to come to that uh, very far away room, uh, there are some t-shirts uh, on the first row, which is uh, medium, large, XL, and 2XL. Feel free to grab a t-shirt before leaving the room uh, and wear it. <laughs> With that, if you have any additional question, you have two minutes for that, and I should answer very rapidly. <laughs>